Good morning, everybody, and Fin Maniacs around the world. Jason Sarney here on a Victory Monday, and I'm joined on the Monday Morning Quarterback, as always, by my co-host, Jay Fiedler. Happy Monday, Jay. Happy Monday. Uh, follow the win against the, against the rival Jets. It's always a happy Monday after that. Any Monday with a victory, I don't care how you do it, is a happy one. Seven and four heading on in to the month of December. So, Jay, we're going to talk about a number of different things. The good, a little bit bad, maybe a little bit ugly. Depends on what kind of movie you like to watch. And we're going to start off with the elephant in the room, though, before we get into the highlights, is the quarterback situation. Yeah. Obviously, you know, with Ryan Fitzpatrick playing well, and he really wasn't playing horribly before losing that starting role, we really need to discuss the differentiations of not just the throwing, basically the mind aspect of the game, the cadence, the, the uh, you know, being able to command the team. So with that said, why don't you help us out and tell us the differences between the both? Well, sure. You know, I think, uh, you know, Fitz had a solid game yesterday. He, he came in, uh, you know, you know that he's a guy who's who's got, uh, you know, command of the offense. Uh, he's, he's been in Gailey's system uh, for, for multiple years. Um, he's, he knows the personnel here with the Dolphins for, for being there, uh, for a couple of years. Uh, he's an 18, 17, 18 year veteran, whatever it is, <laughs> a, uh, you know, 16 year veteran, I think it is. Uh, you know, so he's seen just about every, you know, defense that, uh, an NFL team could put together. Uh, so, you know, you expect that a guy like that. Uh, is going to, you know, have much more knowledge and much more anticipation in his game and, and be able to, to command an offense uh, well. Uh, you know, two is four games into his, in, into his rookie year uh, as a starter. Um, you know, and he's played well. He's, he hasn't been overwhelming, uh, you know, but neither has Fitz really. Uh, you know, neither of them are, are uh, you know, lighting it up. And that's, you know, partly uh, – uh, the, the the position is partly that the Dolphins, you know, right now just don't have you know the huge playmaker uh, guys on offense as well. They got some solid uh, players, uh, you know, Gasicki and and Parker are definitely your top two guys that uh, you know are going to get uh, the most targets. Um, you know, but you don't have uh, an, an offense uh, like we saw you know yesterday with uh, uh, a team like Kansas City Chiefs where. You know, you got playmakers across the board. Uh, you got five, six, seven guys that, you know, when they get the ball in their hands, it's, you know, it, it can potentially be a 50, 60 yard play and, and you know, touchdown at the end of, you know, every every time you touch the ball. Uh, you know, the Dolphins have to be a little bit more deliberate. They have to, uh, you know, convert on the third downs, which they did a very good job of yesterday, uh, you know, keeping control uh, of the ball. Uh, and, and they got to grind it out, and uh, uh, you know that's that's the team that you have, and that's what you got to have to work with. Uh, you know, I think yesterday they they uh, you know the defense helped them out after the two fumbles in the, in the third quarter. Uh, you know, and those are things that this offense can't you know can't happen to them. Uh, you know, like I said, when you don't have the explosive plays, uh, the turnover battle is something that becomes extremely important. Uh, so, you know, they can't give up uh, easy opportunities to, to, to the other team by fumbling the ball or throwing interceptions, which, you know, didn't happen yesterday. But the two fumbles, you know, could have been very costly. Uh, defense came up big. Uh, they got the, the fourth down stop on the one, and, uh, and I think it was a missed field goal uh, on, on the other uh, opportunity. So, you know, two fumbles in your own, you know, on your own side of the field, came out with zero points for the for the uh, opposing team. So, you know, defense did a nice job uh, on that. But, you know, again, as, a, as, a, as an offensive, you know, on the offensive side, you have to make sure that you're not giving those opportunities away because a better team than the New York Jets, who, you know, 0-11 right now, a uh, better team will capitalize on those and, and turn this into a much different game. 100%. And, you know, the Dolphins don't have, as you mentioned, a Tariq Hill or a playmaker even uh, at really a fraction of his ability to score at any time. And the Chiefs are coming to town in a couple of weeks. That's a whole other conversation for another day. But, yeah. you know, when we were talking about last week's loss in Denver, a lot of the things that you were looking at was to his command, the cadence, nothing to do with throwing. 
you know? So what did you notice before we really break down the film and the highlights here? Did you notice a night and day difference just overall by who was leading this huddle, the line of scrimmage and that command? Uh, you know, uh, again, I, I, I don't think it's night and day, which is, you know, we, we, you know, there's a lot of talk right now of, you know, what the Dolphins are going to do with the quarterback situation. Uh, are they going to go back to, to Fitzpatrick uh, and try and make a run, you know, into, into the playoffs? Uh, you know, are they going to stick with Tua when he's healthy? Obviously, you know, we got to figure out and see what uh, his situation is with the thumb and, and uh how he's progressing and, and uh, you know, how he feels going through the week uh, this week. Uh, but, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't see a, a huge difference between the two and in, in, in running the offense. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's, you know, you could say that having Fitzy in there dramatically increases your chances of winning. I, you know, I do think that he's probably your better option right now. But is it a dramatically better option? You know, I don't know. And, and uh, you know, because of that, you know, it gives you good reason to get Tua back in the game, you know, knowing that he's potentially your franchise guy going forward, uh, you know, where he could still uh, win you the games uh, that, that you need, you know, this season as, you know, hey, the Dolphins are 7-4. and four. They're right in the playoff hunt. Uh, yeah, I know they're taking it one game at a time, and that's you know the Flores uh, uh, mantra right now. They're not looking ahead; they're, they're looking at uh, improving week to week and and uh, keeping the focus on now. Uh, but you know, you also have to think about uh, you know the overall team goals going forward as well. And uh, you know, I, I I don't know that having Fitzy in there dramatically increases your chances of going any further in the playoffs than having Tua. And, you know, you know that Tua coming from uh, the college program is, is, is a big game player too. Uh, so you want to see him in those opportunities, uh, you know, as, as we get further into December, into the bigger games uh, going forward. So, uh, you know, again, I think uh, either option right now is, is okay for the team. And, uh, you know, Coach Flores is going to tell you, Whoever he puts in uh, is, is going to give you the best chance of, of, uh, of winning the game. Uh, and that's, you know, good coach speak and, uh, you know, keeping, keep, keeping the focus uh, off the players and, uh, you know, and off the decision and, and, and back on the, the, the team as a whole. Um, you know, but I, I fully expect them to stick with Tua when he's healthy and, and get him back in and, uh, uh, you know, give him the opportunity to, to take the team on his back uh, going forward. And before we get in, Jay, and well said, you know, we do have to just, of course, point out the Dolphins, you know, down a starting offensive lineman in Solomon Kinley. He was out. Down Preston Williams, who may not be back for the rest of the year. And, of course, you know, you look at the running back situation. Miles Gaskin did not play. Savin Ahmed did not play. And, of course, yep. the Jordan Howard was a miss. He's no longer part of the team. So they're playing yesterday down a lot. Sure, against a winless team, but we got to give them that pat on the back for really kind of coming together, next man up, and they got to win. So we're going to go right into this. Uh, I believe this is going to be the first touchdown drive, and yeah. you're going to tell us some uh, ins and outs. Of yeah, this so this is yeah, you know, this is second uh, second quarter. It's tied three three right now. Uh, um, you know, Dolphins had a few uh, you know good plays in the first quarter, but uh, couldn't really ex uh, uh, extend anything. I think that the uh, the penalty on the fourth down, uh, you know, pre-snap penalty on the fourth down play that that you know ultimately gave them the field goal that uh, uh, you know they could have extended that drive and potentially uh, gone down for the touchdown. But uh, you know, this drive I want to show you. We're going to go through all the passing plays, and this is a great 88-yard uh, uh, drive. Uh, this is already second and seven that, that we're looking at. But this play, this drive started on the 12-yard line. Uh, and it was a nice 88-yard uh, touchdown drive, uh, ultimately uh, uh, with Gasicki uh, on the on the touchdown on the uh, receiving end of the touchdown uh, as we go forward. But what I, what I want to really focus on is uh, uh, Fitzy's decision making throughout this drive, especially as it pertains in, into the passing game. Obviously, uh, um, you know that's when he's making his decisions. Uh, you know, he can make some pre-snap decisions possibly uh, with the run game, but we're going to focus here on where he's going with the football, uh, how he's anticipating things, and how he's seeing, um, 
you know, what the defense is, 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 is playing and how that, you know, changes, uh, you know, the way he's looking at uh, delivering the ball. So we're going to start right here on second, second and seven play. Now we talked about it last week. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the Denver Broncos played a lot of man to man against, uh, against Miami. Uh, they mixed up different types of man coverage uh, you did see that a lot with the Jets as well. They played a lot of man-to-man yesterday, and that's why you saw that Parker was targeted a lot and why you saw Gasicki uh, get targeted a lot as well as your top two receivers. You know, those are your top two uh, physical route-running uh, receivers, and when they play man-to-man, those are, the, those are going to be your top two matchups uh, in the passing game. So, you know, Fitzy knows that, and that's why he – ended up uh, targeting those guys uh, a lot more in this game. So we'll start here on second and seven. Uh, we'll go forward just a little bit. Hold on, let me just take the sound off on that. And you can see right here, again, you got press man on, on outside here, press man number two, okay? You got a, uh, a safety matched up uh, over Gesicki over here uh, in a man-to-man -man position. And you look at the top of the screen, uh, same thing, you got press man over here, and you got a linebacker in inside position uh, over here, safety off the screen uh, in the back. Now what they end up doing is they play that robber coverage. They, they bring four uh, four-man rush. This middle linebacker just kind of scopes the middle of the field. He's looking for any crossing routes, any quick crossing routes to jump on. Um, you know, but with this type of, uh, of defense, this is where you just look for matchups. You got the defense in man-to-man. -man. You know, you got Parker right here running a slant route and man-to-man -man coverage, okay? And you got a double slant on the top side. Inside receiver is going to pull, uh, you know, his man inside is going to open up a lane. And you see Fitzy just drop back. He's looking at him all the way. He doesn't have to worry about telegraphing to the defense because they're in man-to-man. -man, and he can put it right on Parker. Uh, you know, for, for the completion. Good command there. I mean, yeah, and nice job. Yeah, you know, Parker with a great release, gets some, some good separation uh, and wins versus man to man, which is what you, exactly what you want. Okay. Take what you can now get. Yeah, now we're into first and 10 play. Okay, you see a different type of look from the secondary now. Okay, off coverage, safety's way off. Okay, they're not really matched up across the board. Okay, and more of a zone look defense. Okay, so in this uh, in this situation, now Fitz is just you know uh, scanning the field across the board and seeing where the open lane, you know, the open guy in the zone is. So he's not worried about matchups. He's not worried about going to you know his top receiver right now. He's worried about where the defense is giving up the zone. Okay, and when you look at it over here, you can kind of see big off coverage over here, about seven, eight yards off. Okay, and you know, really the, the flat defender is playing kind of inside off of number two. So Fitzy just grabs the ball, he sees it is wide open out in the flat. Okay, don't waste any time, get the ball out of your hands and deliver a strike out to Matt Collins, uh, you know, for, for the uh, positive play. Okay, you get first and 10, turns into a second and three play. Now you're ahead of the game. Okay, as we see the Arizona New England highlight <laughs> over there. Uh, but let's go forward here. Okay, now we're into second and three. Okay, and it looks like they start to match up again. Okay, they go back into a man to man look. Okay, they're a little bit off coverage over here now with, with the tighter splits. Um, but you can see them one, two, three matched up with one, two, three. There's an empty set over here. Okay. Now the safety's coming down a little bit further. Okay. And they may bring, you know, an extra, uh, blitzer on this play. No, nope, but they end up still playing, uh, their robber coverage. Okay. So this is your robber man in the middle. I'd right? say so free safety's going back to the middle of the field. And you can see the outside leverage on the inside receivers forcing 
you know, they were forcing the receivers back to the inside where they got help. That's what we talked about last week uh, with that Robert coverage. Um, you know, so Robert uh, coverage right now, Fitzy knows his man to man. He's looking for his best matchup once again. Okay, he likes Kasiki on a, on a flag route. So he's looking right to him and he's going to deliver the ball to him. Misses, misses the throw a little bit. Okay, I think Kasiki took a different angle than he expected. They, were, they weren't on the same page, but they benefited from the flag uh, to get the first down on that. You know, again, a decision that, you know, Fitzy sees the defense. He knows exactly where he wants to go pre-snap. He drops back. He doesn't waste time in the pocket. He gets rid of the ball and ends up with a positive outcome because of the penalty. Okay, but at worst, even if it was an incompletion, you're still at a good third and three situation. Okay, rather than, you know, being indecisive and, you know, potentially taking a sack, uh, you know, on that. Big physical targets, Kaseki Parker, you put yourself in a position to, you know, if you get a flag, great, it's a net positive, and that's what they did there. Yep. Okay, go into first and ten play. Okay, again, Jets go sit back into his own look. Okay, off coverage. Okay, they're zoning up all the way on the outside. So Fitzy knows he's looking for, you know, the open zone, and he's going right through his progression. And when he gets pressure, okay, actually, I'm sorry, this is the screenplay, okay? So they actually set this up, uh, you know, nice setup, the screenplay, uh, deliver the ball over to Washington, makes a nice little juke. Again, positive play on first down, okay? And then the next play here, um, is the play that, that I talked about uh, was was getting into, okay, where Fitzy sees again, all right, zone defense, all right, find your matchups. I mean, that's I'm sorry, find, find your hole in the defense, and you get pressure in your face, know where your outlet is right away, okay, and that's something that Fitzy is, did a great job yesterday you know, as soon as he got pressure, he knew where he wants to go. He knows where he wants to go with the football. Okay, makes a decisive uh, move. All right, right here now, it's a four-man rush. Offensive line gets beat. You get pressure in your face. Okay, get your eyes off of your downfield uh, longer, uh, you know, uh, longer developing routes and come right back to your outlet. Washington just sneaking out into the flat. And he turns over, delivers the ball, positive play. Again, you got to just take positive plays when you get them. This goes back, I believe, the Arizona uh, game that you were breaking down with Tua. Just, you know, you got to get those quick three, four, five yards. If it's the first choice, if it's there, just take it. Yep, exactly. And, you know, sometimes, you know, as a player, you want to always get the, the, the big play uh, opportunity out there. But, you know, the, the, the game doesn't always set, set up that way. Uh, yeah, if your offensive line is protecting you very well and you know you have time to, to sit and wait for, for guys to, you know, arouse to develop downfield, uh, you know, then you could do that. But you also have to know uh, if your line breaks down, if some, you know, someone comes free, okay, I got to make that quick decision, come to my outlet uh, and get rid of the ball before taking the sack. And that's something that, uh, you know, you saw Fitz do on that last play very well turns a potential negative seven, you know, eight yard play uh, on a sack into a positive four or five yard gain and a first down. Good math. That's good okay. math. And that's what you want. Yep, exactly. All right. So here, here, what do you see on the outside? Okay. Press man, press man, press, press across the board. Okay. The Jets aren't disguising much here. Okay, and, and, and Fitz sees it. You know, you got a veteran quarterback back there. Uh, you know, you better try and disguise a little bit. Uh, otherwise, right. he's, he's going to pick you apart. Okay, so, again, press man to man. Okay, he knows he's got uh, his guy Parker is his number one receiver. Man to man on a nice fade route, all right, away from the safety. And, all right, this is the one they benefited from the uh, – uh, uh, you know, from, from the call here, uh, you know, I, I wasn't sure this was a catch. Uh, you know, if you're a Dolphin fan, yes, it's a catch. If you're a Jets fan, it's definitely not a catch. Uh, 
you know, I, 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 I didn't think it was the right call, but the ball was in, in the right place. It gave his guy a, a chance to make the play. Uh, the refs ruled it a, a completion and a fumble, and, uh, and and here we go. We got a, uh, a, a another positive play. You're, you know, 17, 18 yard uh, a, a play down the field, right? and you're in positive territory up in 30, 32, 33 yard line. You know, going forward. It's always nice to get a call. Always nice to get a call. Yep. Sometimes it's a little bit better to be lucky. Uh, yes, exactly. Lucky, better lucky than good, right? Uh, it, okay, in terms, in times. Oh yes, oh yes. So here we go. We're going to come back. Uh, um, and look, they, they, they're not in press man situation over here, but you can see where their defenders, you know, look like they're matched up. They're not. There's only up here on Parker again. And he comes back basically the same play, right? Right back to back. Okay, if it worked for you one time, why not come back to it? Okay. And you got man band down on the bottom of the field. Boom, a little back shoulder throw on the fade from the inside uh, split. Okay, a tight split. You got a lot of room going out to the sideline. All right, good throw, good catch. Great job by Parker getting to the outside right here. All right, and with the leverage of the defender over the top of him. Fitz sees that right away and throws the back shoulder. Parker knows it, uh, uh, make another another play down the field. Okay, and as we move forward, I think they went to a couple running plays next. So we're going to fast forward here to third and eight. Okay, and this is your touchdown play. All right. Now they're not press man, okay, but this is now a uh, a red zone uh, type defense, and you see everyone down across the board, okay. They're even leverage across the board. You can see their body language, okay, looking straight at the, at the, the defender, okay. He's peeking in a little bit, but he's a nice inside leverage over here. As you see the motion come down, you can see the defender go with them. Uh, signifying that it's man to man again. Okay, so this little motion right there gives Fitz an indicator of what the defense is. Okay, and he sees it there. You know, this is now a red zone. This is a pressure uh, type look. All the safeties are down. Okay, there's no one in the middle of the field. Uh, so they're bringing, you know, they're bringing the house on. It's cover zero defense. Okay, this safety is in position to cover the running back. You got matched up two on two here, two on two on the outside. Okay, so you got to expect pressure coming in at you. Okay, Fitzy knows it. All right, he's looking for his guy, okay, who can win on a man to man route. And right now you got Kasiki versus off coverage, cover zero. Okay, usually cover zero, they're playing a lot more inside leverage because they got to protect that quick slant uh, post route. So now when you have a flag route on it, that's a great play versus cover zero defense. And Kasiki does a nice job of stepping on his toes. Boom. Okay, getting, getting past the defender. I'm just going to go back a little bit. So I want to freeze it right when he makes his cut. Right there. Okay, so right now Fitz knows exactly where he's going. He's already winding up. He's got no help over the top. He's got Kasiki with an inside leverage uh, defender, okay, and he knows right now as soon as he makes his cut, he's got him beat. Now what does he do? He doesn't try to make the perfect throw and lead him all the way out to the sideline. Okay, right now he knows once this defender's beat, he's going to be in recovery mode like we talked about last time. Okay, so you don't have to make the perfect throw here. Just give your guy a chance to make the play. Okay, so the under throw here is not a bad play. Okay, as long as you get it up high and, and, and your receiver can see the ball uh, coming. Okay, this defender, as soon as he gets beat, okay, his head doesn't go back to the quarterback. His head's going in recovery mode. Uh, in chase mode, okay, so he's never going to see that ball, okay, so you don't want to, you know, miss it trying to make the perfect throw in the corner of the end zone here, throw the ball up, okay, give your guy a chance to just come back to it, okay, 6'6 six, six versus, uh, you know, 5'11 
uh, defender, you're going to win every single time. I, I love that play, whether it's a fade, a flag, but just getting something in that back corner to get a, a receiver like Kaseki or a pass catcher like Kaseki to go up and get it, almost like a beautiful basketball alley-oop. He just flushed it. It was perfect. Yeah, uh, no doubt. That's, you know, when you get cover zero uh, type defense right there, you know, Fitzy knows there's no help, help over the top. There's no safety coming over, you know, to make that play. He could put as much air as he wants uh, uh, under it uh, without, uh, you know, the, the without worrying about another defender coming over to help out. And, you know, give your guy a chance to just make a play in, in the corner of the end zone. Okay, just like the fade routes that uh, we've seen them, them throw uh, down in the red zone uh, quite often. You know, something that uh, that Chan Gailey loves uh, loves to do. Uh, and again, this is another one. You know, uh, uh, you know, great play call right here. You got uh, the play that you want versus the defense that you want, uh, and it's an easy decision for Fitz to make and just uh, you know get the ball up to his you know number one, number two target uh, uh, in there. I have a general question for you, Jay. You know, a lot of the pundits out there are talking about, you know, as, as nice of a season as both Parker and Gusecki are having, the, the receivers are bottom of the barrel in terms of separation. So I'd really love to hear your take on separation as a whole, right? But then also with this offense, with this team, how important is it? And just that whole conversation, that whole debate. Well, I, th I think it's very important, uh, you know, going forward. And, and we talked about it last week, the success, the success that, uh, that Denver had uh, playing defense against, uh, against this Dolphin team. You know, they had, they had some better uh, 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 D-backs and, and safeties and, and coverage, you know, that could play man-to-man -man and, and, and keep uh, uh, tight coverage on their guys. Uh, and you're going to see, you know, teams that do have, uh, you know, better secondaries uh, in man-to-man -man are going to play a lot of man coverage against this Dolphin team uh, because uh, exactly what you what you just talked about, uh, you know, the inability of the Dolphins to show that they could separate, you know, from that man look. It, it gives a, a, a smaller window uh, for either Fitz or Tua to, to, to throw the ball in there, okay? And, and we talked about earlier in the show, uh, you know, the Dolphins aren't a, a, a big-time playmaker uh, type offense, uh, you know, they're a grinded out uh, uh, control the clock uh, offense right now, uh, and they're relying on these two guys to make those plays uh, in tight coverage. Uh, you know, Gasicki is, is doing a great job. Parker, uh, you know, using his body, getting his hands out to out to the ball, and uh, uh, you know, swiping it away from defenders. Uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of that uh, in the coming weeks because I think you're going to see a lot more man-to-man -man defense. Uh, played against this team. They need to get an overall offensive scheme with running, with obviously continuing to connect to the playmakers. I mean, Gasecki, say what you want about him. He leads tight ends in yards per, per catch, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And yep. Devontae Parker is leading the league in contested catches. So I guess you can call it a silver lining that he's making good on the lack of separation. He's just having a heck of a season. So obviously in the Monday morning quarterback, we look at the – you know, the normal film, but in the next day or so, obviously you're going to be really diving into your, you know, specialty of the coaches breakdown, the all 22. What may be the things that you're going to be looking for for our Wednesday midweek show with that all 22? Is there anything that's kind of on your uh, notepad that you're looking for? Well, it hasn't really come out uh, yet. So I haven't had, had a chance to, uh, uh, to delve in, uh, you know, to, to, to really see what was going on, but, uh, you know, possibly continuing on this 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 type theme of you know how uh, the offense attacks man-to-man uh, -man coverage and and uh, you know plays off of that in, in zone coverage and the decision making uh, uh, that you saw from Fitz in this in this past game. Okay, but uh, you know it might be a surprise. We'll see as I get into the film uh, later today as it, as it pops up on on the game pass and uh, uh, and into tomorrow analyzing it. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see some of the angles, uh, you know, that, uh, that we could uh, deliver to the fans here, uh, you know, the fin, ma fin maniacs and uh, let them know, you know, exactly what's going on in the minds of, uh, of the quarterbacks and, and uh, you know, how Chan Gailey has been scheming uh, uh, to, 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 you know, really get this offense going. 
And listen, it's, again, it's 7-4. and four. This team is, on, and I really don't love using this term, but they're playing with house money. This is really a situation where you walked into a casino, you didn't expect to do much that night, and you're doing really well. So it's a situation where you don't want to kind of ruin the nice little momentum that you've got. Well, look, and a lot of it, you know, uh, comes down to, you know, the situation of, of the game. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, they played – pretty well in the first half offensively. Uh, they put 13 points up on the board, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, in the third quarter, they had those two fumbles, you know, from the running backs. And, you know, at that point, you know, you could start to, to you know, get a little bit defensive and a little bit conservative uh, in the play call. And as the clock starts to wind down, uh, you know, as you're still maintaining a, a 10 point or, 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 you know, 17 point lead, Okay, you don't have to make big plays right. at, the, at that point. You don't have to make the explosive plays. Okay, you just got to keep those negative plays, uh, you know, from from occurring. So, um, you know, you, you, one of the reasons why you're not seeing some of the explosive plays is just the situation of uh, of the ball game too. Uh, you know, yesterday you're going against a, a team that hasn't had much success. That wasn't, you know, your defense was playing well. Okay, you don't want to. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you don't want to create a situation where your offense uh, is a detriment to, to the game and, and, you know, puts your defense in bad position, whether it's, you know, on a turnover uh, like the fumbles in, in the third quarter uh, or potentially, uh, you know, uh, getting a defensive score against you, which, uh, you know, gives life to a team that, you know, is, is down in the dumps. And, uh, you know, certainly the Jets is, uh, are not, you know, right now, a, a, a confident team uh, playing at 0-11, putting, uh, I think they put three points on the board uh, in two games against uh, the Dolphins. So, you know, kudos to the defense, uh, uh, you know, doing a great job both in the red zone and, and uh, uh, you know, with the turnovers that, that they were able to create. Uh, you know, another great job by, by the Dolphins' D. And, and the offense did what they had to do to win the game. And sometimes that's just what you need. There's three phases of football. Jason Sanders, who is, for my money, the best kicker in the league. Right Have now, you ever seen is, anything like there's this, no Jay? doubt about it. I mean, those those 50 yarders. I mean, you could you could put a pole right down the middle of the the you know down the middle of the goalpost, and and he might hit it every single time. I mean, I think he Amazing. kicked that uh, that second one from Westchester, and it went right in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, uh, this was a, a good win. It wasn't a, a Mona Lisa-type beautiful win, but a, a win's a win. It's the third time, Jay, in five years the Dolphins have swept the Jets. That's a, that's amazing. I, you know, I love to see that. Uh, you know, when I, when I was there, we were on a, uh, a, a streak on the opposite side. I think, you know, when I first got there in 2000, we were already on a on – a, you know, six or seven game uh, losing streak, and that extended, uh, uh, you know, for, for another game, uh, you know, that first season. But, uh, you know, we were finally able to, to, to get over the hump. But, uh, you know, it's good to see, you know, that's flipping around to the other side now with, uh, you know, a nice streak that the Dolphins have uh, against their heated rival, the New York Jets. For, it, it is the most heated rivalry in my mind from inception of, of this division to right now. But, uh, Jay, how was your Thanksgiving? How was the stuffing? Uh, the stuffing was delicious, as always. Uh, was a very nice Thanksgiving, uh, you know, small gathering with the family. And uh, uh, it was actually, a, 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 you know, the food was, was, as always, you know, one of the best meals of the year. Love the turkey, love the stuffing, great gravy. Uh, my sister-in-law, you know, does a does a beautiful job. Uh, you know, getting the table all set and and uh, delivering a, a nice meal. And of course, the desserts are, are pretty spectacular as well. What'd you go with dessert-wise? Oh, we had a little pumpkin pie, a little apple pie. Got to have the alamode on top. Throw oh, the yeah. ice cream on top. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was stuffed to the gills and uh, and, and had plenty more for leftovers the next day. Well, it's officially the holiday season, and that means it's officially playoff push time. And the fact that we're even talking about it now, Jay, Dolphin fans all over the place have to be very very thankful. So, with that said. 
For Jay Fiedler, Jason Sarney here for the Monday Morning Quarterback. We'll see you guys in a couple of days for the midweek show. Take care, everybody.